Hi, everyone. So I put a board in the link uh, or in the chat, a link in the chat, and we're going to use this board kind of in a collaborative way um, as we go through a presentation and activity. And I'm going to introduce these guys a little bit more formally in a bit. But as people are kind of coming in, we're going to do a bit of an icebreaker. So Christina and Jaka, I'm going to hand it over to you to run the icebreaker. And then once we're done with that, I'll kind of introduce you guys. Sounds good. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, so we wanted to start off with a little bit of an icebreaker just to, to get a level playing field and understand uh, where everyone is sitting on the spectrum of experience with design sprints. Uh, so you'll see in the board, if you sort of scroll over to the, to the icebreaker area, uh, feel free to grab uh, the emoji that you feel best represents you uh, and sort of just you know copy and paste it and then put it into maybe the category of your experience with design sprints uh, whether you've never done one, you've done maybe one or two, or you feel like you're an expert um, and you have all of the design sprint knowledge that exists out in the world. I'll also participate. I'll throw a design. I'll throw my emoji on there too. So totally fine. If you can't um, find out where we're looking, just let, let us know and we'll help you get there. I can also share my screen uh, so we can see as we are developing. For anyone who's just coming in, uh, we're just starting our icebreaker here. Uh, we're sort of setting the playing field for anyone who has experience with design sprints and seeing where everyone's at. So go ahead and throw emoji in your category. And then once you've done that, uh, for whatever category you're in, we've sort of asked like a second layer question. Um, so either if you're, if you're in that first category where you've never done a design sprint, maybe why not? Um, and go ahead and detail on a sticky note or two why you haven't done one or voice any concerns you would have over doing a design sprint. If you've done one or two, um, maybe talk about how it went, um, something you'd like to learn moving forward. And then if you're a master, share uh, what makes you uh, a master and something about your superpower. What, what is your design sprint superpower? So it looks like we have um, maybe some people in each category. It would be awesome if uh, anyone who's never done a design sprint could maybe share um, if you're open and willing, or I'm happy to like sort of sort of read them out or ask a little bit. So um, I think it looks like we have a question around like what is a design sprint, uh, which I think is a great question. Uh, happy to go into a little bit more detail about that. I think we'll cover a lot more about it. Um, but generally it's essentially like a condensed amount of time where you focus on solving one very specific problem. So you and maybe a group of cross collaborators or a small group of teams or a small team comes together to really put all your efforts into um, diagnosing a problem, um, potentially working on a bunch of different solutions really quickly, um, putting those solutions out there, testing them, and then sort of like refining and converging on one particular solution all within a week span. So a, tradi a traditional design sprint typically happens within, within a week. So it's a really quick sort of agile way of working that ends up being quicker than even like a typical two week sprint that most, most people would think of, of agile. But I don't know, Z, if you have anything to add to that. Well, we used uh, AJ and Smart, uh, which is a design agency that basically bases all their work on these sort of condensed uh, problem solving exercises. We used them as a basis for this. Uh, so uh, luckily Miro and AJ and Smart or Jake Knapp, I wasn't really sure who have, have a collaboration because so that's where the template came from. Uh, but if you need to dig deeper or you want to dig deeper into design sprints, uh, there's a great book called Sprint. Um, that you could um, study and, and look at and uh, uh, figure out how to do this uh, um, in, a, in a more sort of expanded way. Uh, Christina and I uh, obviously uh, read the book and looked at all the advice online, but we sort of jumped into this a little bit ourselves, sort of, uh, and learned how to swim while we we're doing it. So if you need to learn more, definitely uh, look, at the, look at the book. Uh, that'd be a good resource. 
Does that answer that question a little bit? I don't want to call anyone out. It looks like, okay, great. Awesome, Kathy. Um, it looks like maybe someone hasn't had a chance yet. And then also seems to require a lot of thought time organization. Yes, definitely. Um, I think hopefully after we sort of like walk through our approach, um, it feels like there are some maybe ways to get around having to put more time or organization or thought into um, it than you need to. I think that was definitely something that we experienced really early on was like, it feels like this massive barrier to entry to be able to go and execute a design sprint. Um, but hopefully with some tips and tricks and some of like being able to pass on some of our knowledge, it feels, it hopefully feels like less of this like really overwhelming daunting thing to take on. Um, but I definitely felt that. So I can definitely relate to that. I'm, I'm empathetic in that way. Um, Jared, I know that you were over here sort of like throwing out all your superpowers. Do you have any thoughts to share? Sure, I can share something. I, I would say my number one uh, tip is really to have like a co-facilitator. A lot of times, especially if you're doing this remotely, there's a lot of moving parts and people can kind of get lost. So you kind of have the main facilitator that's giving the instructions and introing the activities. And you can kind of have this co-facilitator hanging out in the background, answering all those questions, kind of keeping people engaged and moving. And that um, has been life-changing. And I feel like I'm drowning when I don't have that. So that would definitely be my top tip. For sure. I think that was something that Z and I realized extremely early on was that I'm not sure we would have survived it without each other. Hence why you get the package deal of both of us tonight. Um, yeah. <laughs> So uh, we like to build each other up a lot. So you'll probably hear uh, a lot of us be, or both of us be really thankful for each other. But I think generally like anyone that you take on sort of this work with starts to feel like a saint because uh, you realize that it's almost really hard to do it totally alone. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, any other sort of questions before we dive in or anything that uh, you would like us to take into consideration as we tell you how we did it. Um, I see a familiar face. I have to give a shout out to Davida, who I used to work with uh, many ages ago. So, so glad to see you here. This is exciting to, to see a familiar face. Anything from your experience, Davida, that, that what brought you here and what are you interested in hearing about? Uh, well, so I've started working remotely permanently and um, we've got a small in-house marketing team. And I was the one who wrote that. It just seems really overwhelming. Like we don't have the time or the organizational skills or anything to get this going, but we have projects where something like this could be really beneficial. And if we did spend some of the time that we'll ultimately spend on this upfront, maybe it would save us, um, you know, some headaches. So that's why I'm here. And I've used Miro before for more like ideating on um, like just collaboration ideating things, not in a super organized way, but um, so it's a tool I was familiar with. So I was excited to kind of see how to maybe better utilize it. Awesome. Well, I think we can most likely answer both of those questions. So uh, as we dive in, um, anything else that before we start, Jared, that you feel like we should cover or we should just dive in? So I um, just wanted to point out, um, this is our community space for our Austin group. And um, we're technically the Austin Miro group, but a lot of our folks come from all over the world. And even after the pandemic is over, I, I feel like I've been saying that forever, we're gonna kind of try to do this in a hybrid fashion. And so one thing that we wanna do is build a network of folks um, so that, you know, if you need a designer for something or you, you know, realize, you know, Christina might be the only, you know, content designer that you know, and you have a question, that you can come back to this board and, you know, look her up, uh, find her LinkedIn profile, remember her name. So this little yellow sticky right to the side of the icebreaker links over to kind of this little lounge, this virtual lounge that has just a, um, a space for you to put in your info if you'd like to. Um, and you can kind of see all the different people that have come through um, and the different times that they've been 
in different events. So it's just a way for us to kind of build an online community and we'll continue to do this um, different times. So anytime you wanna come over here and contribute to it or look at, you know, peer into other people, uh, feel free to do that. Um, but I do um, want to kind of give these guys an intro. I'm really excited to have both of these girls with us. Um, the really interesting about the company they work for, Huddle, is that they're a, a distributed team. So, you know, they have a lot of the challenges that some of us are experiencing for the first time of figuring out how to do a lot of this remotely. And I know for me, Miro's been a godsend, but I'm trying to figure out how to move my team in those directions. Um, get us kind of synergistically, you know, working together, collaborating together in an online platform. And there's been a lot of blessings with that. And then there's been a lot of hurdles we've had to overcome. And so I'm just really excited to hear from both Jeka and Christina. Um, and so I would love to hear maybe just your guys' take on your team and a brief intro about yourself, and then we can jump into the presentation. All right, well, I can start. Uh, my name is Jeka Hassler. I am a senior product, product designer at Huddle. Uh, I work uh, in our uh, focus camera, or now call, we're called the hardware team. Uh, so we're basically uh, really focused, and it's, it's, a, it's a fun pun to use, focused on focus. Uh, we're focused on user experience when it comes to, uh, to our auto capture camera. So uh, there's a lot of moving parts. It's a very uh, collaborative and then sort of expansive field where you uh, deal with products that uh, belong in manufacturing all the way to uh, software UIs for users to uh, create recordings. So uh, it creates a really wide and complex um, problem space for a designer because uh, as, as sort of Christina and I uh, work on this together, we find opportunities to plug in in a lot of different areas that uh, are not possibly typical in, in design industry. So uh, that's one that, that kind of makes it complicated. Also, we are, uh, our team is distributed in different countries. So we have a team in Netherlands. Uh, we also have a lot of offices in Boston. Omaha, Lincoln, uh, Texas, all over the country, basically. So we are already remote. Uh, so when COVID started, uh, we were not really impacted uh, terribly so. So uh, we have we were already collaborating. But uh, as a team, uh, we are looking for uh, improving our collaboration tools. So we were actually looking and using Miro uh, more expansively beyond the free uh, free license that we were starting with, and now we're really seeing benefits of moving a lot of our uh, collaboration and thinking into Miro. Uh, so that's kind of all I really uh, have to cover there. Christina, would you go ahead? Sure. I'm Christina. I'm coming to you tonight from Boston. Um, so as Z alluded to, uh, we have offices everywhere. So for anyone who also doesn't know or doesn't have any background on Huddle, we are a sports tech company. Um, we primarily specialize in delivering uh, video and analytics to sports teams really across the globe. And one aspect of that is also helping them capture uh, a lot of their games um, or practices uh, with a camera and bringing more impacts and I guess like a stronger impact um, to video in sports, uh, making video more accessible. My primary role is I'm a senior content designer. Uh, for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with content design or what sort of the spectrum of that, that realm entails, um, I really like to think of it as like a UX or product designer, um, but instead of really thinking about heavily as, as heavily on the visual side, um, my medium is more words. So I do everything thinking about our IA and hierarchy um, to the way that we deliver information to even like the, the copywriting, the, the small UI copy uh, experiences within our software, um, which also coincides with a lot of the work that Z does um, with our physical hardware product camera, writing instructions, how are people going to interact with the physical as well as the software and bring that experience together. Um, I've been at Huddle for about a year and a half now. Um, and Z and I have had the pleasure of collaborating really heavily across a, a lot of work. And this is just one facet of that. So super excited to be here and be able to chat with you all tonight um, and hopefully can answer any questions that you may have. Uh, so bring them on. 
Thanks, Christina. Uh, yeah, we're, we're hoping to actually give you uh, tools and encouragement to actually jump into one of these. And uh, we're going to show you how uh, how it took some courage and bravery for us to actually do it um, and uh, and uh, kind of give you uh, all the sort of necessarily ingredients if you were to cook uh, cook this particular uh, recipe up for you. So uh, we divided this presentation into three sections. We're going to tell you sort of what, what prep looks like for the design sprint, uh, what happens when you're actually running one or two as we did uh, back to back, and then uh, what, what does a sort of post-design sprint time look like. Um, so let's dive in. Um, Talking about who, why, what, how, and when, uh, we took a little bit of a journalistic approach to this. So uh, to, to kind of give a snapshot, uh, our preparation took about, I want to say six weeks uh, altogether. And it got more intense as, as the day uh, came up. Uh, it basically started as a, as a conversation between us. We were, we were lamenting to each other about uh, all the user experience debt huddle has accumulated. Um, over the years and then everything that we feel like could be better, but we just don't know how to prioritize or how to approach and, and, and how to actually tackle it all. So, um, and uh, we basically shared each other's passion for fixing the, the, the issues that are uh, foundational experience of the product. So one thing about Huddle that's, uh, that's uh, interesting, but also sometimes uh, challenging is we move really fast. So it's really, really easy to accumulate uh, a lot of debt in that sense. Um, so that's that's we found each other as partners. We've been collaborating for about a year before we did this. So uh, I feel like we we are we are now at the point where we almost have a hive brain. Like I we can collaborate in Miro, and one of us is doing one thing, and the other one is doing the other thing. It's really seamless. So our collaboration capabilities have gotten pretty seamless. I rely on Christina all the time, and and uh, she helps me make sense out of everything that I do. So uh, I, I I I can't imagine my world without her. So. That is definitely true. Uh, one thing that that we started then, uh, as we were looking at our, our end and experience, we started discovering like kind of run into like mo mo product mo problems that you that you have. So our our uh, a backlog has about five hundred issues, uh, which is you know who five hundred issues in a backlog. That's that's a lot. And this is just a little screenshot to kind of give you an idea what that looks like. It is complicated. There's a lot to it. Uh, it is intense. So that's something uh, we definitely uh, uh, were considering. Uh, also, not only do we have a really extensive backlog, but we also are looking to scale really quickly on top of it. So like new markets, new products, improvements to old products. So uh, how do you do that? And then actually pay attention to all the things that we still need to fix. Um, and also we, we knew these cracks exist, but it was really hard to tally and, and prioritize to like, like it's, it's, it's so much that um, we, uh, we were like, okay, we really can't just uh, work on this as side of our desks and just chip at it a little at a time. Like we need some like actual focused effort and, and, uh, and uh, uh, finally we advocate for these changes. So Christina and I were sort of talking about like what could we do, and uh, uh, we've been thinking about design sprint for a while, and and our problems are pretty intense. So something like design sprint actually could have been could be a tool to to solve a lot of our issues, uh, but we decided, hey, like why don't we try design sprint? Uh, it felt like uh, it was it was the only way to get actual like. A week of focus or two weeks of focus. Uh, I would because I am part of a team, so I am part of like a scrum sprint cadence. So I would uh, have to peace out for two weeks and not see my team. So that would that would be helpful to give me open up time uh, to do stuff that's not in sprint. And then uh, this this side of the desk stuff is just not really productive. So uh, one thing that Christina and I have in common, we just like to jump into things. So we were like, hey, let's just go. Uh, and let's see where this takes us. Uh, little that we knew, knew uh, is that we actually have a lot more allies than we thought on our team. So um, uh, we found a lot of support pretty, pretty quickly too. Uh, there was a lull in my team's work uh, at the time. So they were focusing on very engineering heavy uh, uh, problems. So we were like, hey, this would be a great time to fit in uh, some of this design sprint work. Uh, let's let's see uh, how we can figure it out. So 
uh, we talked to our stakeholders. Uh, our design director uh, is very supportive, so obviously he was game for it. But uh, then we connected to our uh, lead uh, product manager, and and from her perspective, was like, yeah, this is great. This is actually going to help us identify uh, and prioritize list of problems that we need to solve. But then also we are expanding to a different market, which is shared facilities. And I don't want to get too much into detail into that, but we were not set up to support uh, 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 a, a facility that has multiple cameras at the time. So we need to kind of figure out how we're going to tackle these two problems. Um, in your case, it may be different. So you may actually have to really like uh, figure out what your outcomes are and to convince people. Uh, ideally, design sprint is done when the whole team uh, across disciplines actually takes a week off. So anybody from engineers, QA, your PMs, like everybody will be involved. We did not have that luxury. So we really, really had to figure out how we can plan this properly uh, and bringing in people at these crucial moments and then letting them go uh, do their actual work, day-to-day -day work. So we really needed to plan and, and uh, figure that out for ourselves, but still like, we were able to actually get the, the outcomes that we wanted. So even if you cannot convince your company to stop working on everything they're working on for two weeks, uh, you can still have advocates and then bring people at the, at the crucial moments in time and, and uh, have them uh, participate, participate properly. Uh, and then we planned the crap out of it. Uh, we created a strong plan and, and we knew it was loosely held, uh, but Christina did an awesome job trying to actually figure out what our days are gonna look like because that's when you actually start seeing like, okay, this is a real thing. This is what we could do. Um, and uh, and as, as all of this, like all of a sudden we were in this avalanche, like this is actually happening. So we, were, we started to get really, really excited. Um, and then we were able to choose a date. Uh, we strategically chose two weeks right before Thanksgiving holiday so we can actually take time off. Uh, this proved to be an excellent decision uh, because your brain is gonna be completely fried. Uh, if you see here, this is what our days look like. All of these are Zoom calls. Uh, it was super intense, and uh, but I don't think I could have done it with anybody else uh, than Christina, uh, because it was just it was it was long days, uh, and you can kind of see like we would run out of energy, and then one would have more energy than the other one, and and uh, so that was that was sort of uh, we pulled each other through through it together. Um, doing this also allowed us to create these like time chunks for collaboration where we invited other people to it and uh, we they were warned that they're going to be invited uh we had to be strategic about user interviews as well so those had to fit into this plan as well and then also we needed to take a, a good look at like how the design sprint is structured and then have each day dedicated to to a specific goal um so that was that was a uh, very, very uh, an intense planning session, but we arrived at a schedule and we actually held to it. And uh, um, you can kind of see uh, there's multiple breaks planned into it and those came in handy really, really well. So uh, Christina's sense of time is much better than mine. So she was really able to kind of give us allotted spots of like work, 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 take a break, work, 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 take a break. And it, it worked out really, really well. So that is kind of how what went into planning. Uh, planning for this. Uh, after we set this, this is probably about four weeks before the date, I think, and then we had about four weeks to actually cram everything together and clean things up. So this this ends our first sort of uh, session here. So uh, what it would be great to do now is if you could uh, go to the activity that's right under this uh, frame six, and uh, we wanted to actually kind of take you to, through the journey that we went through when we were doing this. So if you could think about problems that you have on your horizon, that would be great candidates for a design sprint, something, something big, something that takes everybody to think about. Uh, it could be a discovery sprint, sort of what we did where we tallied all the UX debt that we had or a new problem, problem that hasn't been solved yet. So you may end up with a solution at the end of the sprint. Um, kind of be flexible and just brainstorm a few ideas. Uh, and then if you could share uh, your ideas, that would be fantastic. Um, I will probably, uh, I think five minutes or less uh, for this activity. So feel free to uh, add any ideas. Um, so Christina, if you have anything to add to this section, otherwise uh, we can just move into our activity. Yeah, I see some people going ahead and 
throwing in some ideas. I would also, if anyone has questions right now about anything we just covered while, while people are doing some thinking, uh, totally happy to answer those either um, like if you wanna ask out loud or just even in the chat, uh, keep an eye on that if, if any questions do pop up. I can start. One, a, a big problem for us that we have, it's, it's almost like an internal facing problem is it's really hard for us to get as designers our hands on metrics. Um, we have a tough time tracking a lot of data, uh, which makes it really hard to advocate for a lot of the problems that we wanna go solve. So I'd love to solve that as a preliminary problem to get um, a look into the metrics and the data that we would really want. I think we have this like um, this great concept of like very large buckets of data that we can easily go pull up dashboards and stuff. Um, but when it gets like into the really nitty gritty, it gets either very technical or you have to be super creative about the way that you go about it. And it just makes it pretty inaccessible as like just a designer to go and find that information. Um, and it makes it really hard to advocate for the problems that you feel really strongly about or that you know that are problems because to get them prioritized, a lot of the business looks at the hard numbers rather than the qualitative data that we're hearing from a lot of user interviews a lot of the time. Um, so I would love to solve that as a very selfish sort of problem internally. Um, but another thing I was thinking about was troubleshooting for our users is not a great experience right now. If something goes wrong, they don't necessarily get as a content designer, the information um, that they would need or be able to use to accurately troubleshoot uh, whatever errors they're type they're getting. So that would be something I would like as a content person, love to go and uh, fix. Anyone else? All of these problems sound very interesting. Uh, anybody want to share? We don't want to. We don't want to call call on you guys. <clears throat> I'll share. Um, and I had first started, I think, maybe writing out more of, of like ways we could go about solving the problem than the problems. So then I like took a step back and um, so how to help our web visitors pick a unit size. And I work for a self storage company, and it's very hard for people to. Uh, you know, wrap your heads around what size unit will you need for your things. You're making all these physical size adjustments and trying to understand that um, is really difficult. So uh, just kind of improving that and giving people the confidence to to reserve a unit and, and go ahead. Yeah, that sounds like a like a perfect problem uh, to fit this. It's well defined. Everybody feels the pain. Uh, and at the end, if you had users lined up on the last day of the sprint, you can actually test your flows. So, uh, yeah, that's that's exciting. Nothing like a like a physical requirement that's hard to communicate as a problem. We have that constantly when it comes to installing cameras, and and it is a constant theme for us. The sort of blend of physical uh, space uh, limitations and then per person on the other side trying to uh, figure it out. So, great share. Anyone else? If not, uh, we can move to what happened during our sprint. Uh, and then Christina is going to uh, talk about this. Let me uh, go back to the presentation and I will go here. Awesome. Thanks for driving, Z. Um, yeah, so what happened during our design sprint? How did we actually execute this? Um, especially, I know. Um, from the beginning of it, people are interested um, how we were able to do this remotely, collaboratively. Um, so I'll speak to that and make sure um, I hopefully I'm covering uh, some of the questions there. Um, but I think you sort of get the sense from the schedule, like you go into it with the understanding that there are gonna be some like long challenging days, but they're also incredibly rewarding. Um, and I think we discovered that as we went on that like, I think the work is worth it. And especially when you collaborate, you get this like really intense sense of pride um, at everything you accomplish. And I think what makes it so cool about a remote environment is um, everything lives on in a way that it doesn't typically 
uh, if you were to do this in person. So if you were to think that you typically do this in person, you're just working on the same whiteboard every day and, and maybe you take pictures and stuff. But the cool thing about Miro was like, when we threw it all into this one board, it actually all lived on the entire time and in like into this one like really big artifact and we'll actually show you that. Um, so hopefully you can get, get an idea of what that looks like. But I think that's the cool thing about working collaboratively. Um, but some big parts of sort of how we executed this was we, we kind of deviated a little bit, uh, which I think is okay to do. Um, and then we, we executed on, on the way that we deviated. Uh, we did some iterating um, and then obviously collaboration was such a big part of, of all the work that we did. But speaking to, to how we deviated, um, the UX design gods uh, may have our heads for this, but we didn't do the traditional design sprint. Uh, it just didn't make sense for what we needed to learn. And I think um, that's something that can be what's so overwhelming and overbearing about a design sprint is feeling like you have to do it by the book. Um, I think there's like sort of this stigma around a design sprint that it's like, you're only gonna get value out of it if you do everything exactly how it's supposed to be. And I think Z and I, uh, in our heads have sort of like crushed that stereotype and just totally taken it in a way that that was going to work for us because being realistic, um, unless you are very mature in sort of your staffing or very mature in your agile environment or very mature in the way that you're able to solve problems, uh, it's not going to work for everyone. And you maybe not don't don't have the chance to get the resources that you need or don't have the time or whatever it looks like. Um, so for us, it was kind of like, how can we hack this to make this be something uh, where we're actually going to be able to make it work for us and still learn from it? Um, so one of our biggest problems was we didn't know about all of the problems. Like that was our problem. It was like, we don't know about all of the UX debt that we have that exists within our experience. And that's a big problem for us. We can't advocate for it. Um, we are essentially building blind here or designing blind here when we don't know all of the problems that we have. Um, so we really wanted to take some of our design sprint and identify those, those bad parts of the experience with, with the UX lens. So we use the traditional design sprint as a guide, not as a constraint. Um, and instead of mapping, sketching, deciding, prototyping, testing, we actually decided that we were going to spend our first day auditing our experience um, because otherwise it, we like couldn't find the time to like really do it and go through everything and get an actual camera in Z's house and test like all of the flows. Like that stuff has been hard for us remotely, especially. So it was nice to have the devoted time to be able to like actually do that, document all of it, and then prioritize what are the, what are we think are the biggest problems that we actually need to solve or the biggest pieces of debt that we have, design against them, and then sort of like test and tell everyone what we've found. Um, so that's how we adapted it to our needs. And then executing it, um, a big part of that, see if you want to move on, yeah, was essentially don't do more work than you need to. And this is where Miro is amazing in my mind because like templates are such a gift uh, and that's what we use essentially as our foundation. Um, we used it to orient ourselves, build on top of it, we tweaked it. But like the nice thing about this official remote five-day design sprint um, that exists in Miro is we kept that whole same format and didn't have to do all the like the little pieces of design work around actually putting this like board together. It was already all there. And then we could just change the words or like move things around and the activities were all already designed too. Um, we just swapped it to align with our schedule, align with our needs. Um, but another thing I think is like, keep the goals at the forefront. Uh, if the goal of your design sprint is to create like a beautiful mirror board that you can reuse and templatize yourself, that's like amazing, go do it. But that's not what we were trying to do. Um, the mirror board was just a method uh, we used as like a means to an end. Um, we really just wanted to drive action based on the output of our week. So we prioritize using our mirror board to organize ideas and facilitate brainstorming and ultimately prototype, um, which the nice thing about also doing this remotely and collaboratively is like Miro became the documentation. So it was really two birds with one stone. And what was cool about that was like bringing people into it. They actually saw all the work that we were doing and it, it laid this foundation at the ground level for everything that, that we were working on um, instead of only getting like tidbits here and there. And we obviously communicated a lot of that, but when they came into the mirror space, they also saw 
sort of, they, they had all the context that they needed as soon as they walked in the room. Um, whereas like, think of like this massive whiteboard, right? Where you like walk in the room and you can actually go and piece, start piecing things together. Even if you're only brought in for a certain brainstorm or a certain conversation. Um, but on top of like that documentation, we wrapped up each day, which I would highly suggest uh, at least devoting like 15 minutes to the end of each day to like look at your day and be like, okay, what did we do today? Summarize some of key, those key takeaways for yourself. And then also it makes it a lot easier to share those out. Um, so just so it becomes more accessible to everyone and then they can go and dig deeper as they need to. Um, but that was a big part of our execution was communicating uh, sort of our progress each day. And then uh, a big part of executing is iterating. So remember how we said like strong plan loosely held, that's because it will change. Like you just have to come to, come to terms with the fact that it's gonna change. Um, like any good solution to a problem, you work on the fly, you iterate, uh, you make changes. And like it or not, I think design sprints involve iteration in real time. So you can't necessarily predict what's gonna change or what won't. Um, you could have like, like we did a schedule in everything time boxed and yet you'll still need to make an adjustment for time. You can coordinate every brainstorm and activity months in advance and someone will ultimately have a conflict. Uh, you could do all the information gathering in the world and someone will still tell you something a day ahead of time. That's like something new that you didn't realize that is pivotal in the information that you need for the design sprint. So stuff is always gonna change. I think you have to be adaptable and be flexible. Um, don't get too attached to your plan. Um, I think it's great to have a plan, but you'll need to adjust to, to be successful ultimately. Um, one way that we adjusted was like incorporating in the screenshot some user task mapping after one of our brainstorms, um, which we hadn't really planned on. It was sort of, we did this brainstorm, we got a, a ton of amazing ideas from the team and we were having a tough time converging on one. We, lo we loved so many of the ideas that we felt like in order to land on the best solution, we actually really needed to go back and map out the specific tasks of our users so that we could keep an eye on um, making sure we were actually solving the right problem and not just like trying to incorporate every solution into this like one great thing that we loved. Um, it was a great way for us to sort of reorient ourselves and then converge on something that was the best solution, not just like we have all these potential solutions. Um, it was really narrowing in on grabbing the right pieces for the right solution. And then collaboration, obviously, um, I think that's like such a big part of everyone's world right now and, and doing that remotely. Um, like we said, we weren't really given the resources to carry out uh, our design sprint with an entire cross-discipline team, and we would have loved that. Um, but we knew this was a chance to educate people on what design sprints could bring to the table and advocate for them in the future. Uh, so to make up for a lack of resources, we included team members wherever possible, and we wanted them to feel really empowered to contribute ideas and intrigued to ask questions or give feedback um, and make them excited about the work that we were doing. So inviting them into sessions was a huge factor that contributed. And um, we would just bring them right, like I said, right into the mirror board so they could sort of have all the context that they need and just work with us as we were working um, on this like big board together. Um, specifically like getting people into sessions where they could sketch uh, and explore wild ideas uh, created like this really healthy buzz around what we were doing. Um, so we would do maybe some of the stuff that wasn't as fun, but getting them into these sessions where they could actually like really explore and it felt like almost a break away from their their day to day was a great way. I think it's a, a great tip for just like fostering really healthy collaborative relationships in any work that you're doing is like get them into something that feels like fun and different from what they do on a typical day to day that might be more of your world or even like to get the creative juices flowing for everyone, even if not everyone is a designer and no one's a designer. Um, it's a great way to like remove the lens and sort of explore what's possible, even if you aren't able to, to implement any of those solutions. But one big thing was like, communicate, 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 like it's okay to be annoying about it. And I think that's also something that like at Huddle I've learned, um, we like, we were, we have people everywhere. And so over communication is just a practice. It's a habit, but especially in a pandemic and COVID, like the, I don't, I don't think over communication is possible. And if you feel like you're being annoying, you're doing a good job. 
So it's like a change in mindset in that way. Uh, we ping Slack channels with progress updates. We shared sketches. We posted screenshots of our sticky notes. We did all the things to make sure people knew about the work that we were doing. And I think that gives everyone an opportunity to engage in how much they feel like they want to. But if you're not sort of putting the information out there, then you aren't even giving them the opportunity to engage. So for us, it's communicate a lot and communicate often. So um, anytime you can include emojis in Slack or whatever you use, that also tends to drive some sort of interaction or at least gets people to look at it or read it. Um, so that's, that's what I used every day for, for our end of day updates in Slack. Um, but what we really wanna do is show you uh, what our board looked like for our design sprint. So Zee's gonna hop over that tab. Uh, so we used this template um, and what we actually did was adjust the big phases. And then uh, Z, if you sort of like wanna walk through maybe a little bit, um, this was the one that we were like trying to identify all of our debt. And then we actually did a full audit the first day um, for each part of our part of our experiences. So those are those big cards on that first day. And then we evaluated, evaluated the experience heuristically, rated them. Um, we got people in here to give us feedback and leave comments on all of the things we spotted. We color coded all of that stuff so it was easy to find. And then the next day uh, we were able to do the documentation piece of it. And then we were we prioritized by writing user stories. And then we had a, a bunch of our stakeholders come in and do some dot voting. Um, so while we were working, it was all already there in Miro. Um, then we went to, to the prototyping and brainstorming session and mapped out those user tasks. So see, I, I know like my talking and I feel like I'm, hopefully I'm not giving people too much like a whiplash here as we scroll around because it's a, it's a big board, right? But I think it just goes to show that the stuff I'm mentioning about like the context being there and people being able to see the process and see the evolution of it uh, is really cool. But if does anyone have any specific questions about anything I just covered or wants to see something on our board that might be interesting? Happy to chat through that. It kind of gives you I a, have, a, a, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I have a question. I find one of the hardest challenges is the kind of converge on and deciding how narrow of a problem to actually solution on. So just curious how you guys arrived or dealt with that conundrum. I mean, it was it was hard. Uh, I feel like uh, in the in the first design sprint that we did, uh, our goal was to capture all the broken windows in our experience, which is a very wide topic. And it's easy to forget the second anybody starts getting into the weeds of any problem, it's really easy to forget that we're trying to capture everything and then prioritize. Um, in, the, in our like what we learned part of the presentation, we're gonna tell you how uh, we did not define that properly and we possibly crammed a few different outcomes on top of each other. So having that clear goal definitely helps. Uh, we counted on everybody, everybody giving us grace because this is our first time doing a design sprint, which they they gave us a lot of grace there. Uh, but it took us it took us a minute to converge, and even on this, like day four, so you kind of see like okay, we're going to go from from all these sketches and user tasks to actual prototypes here that we're going to test with these users in the morning. There was a there was a painful point of, of here when we realized like we can't show them all of these things. We need to pick one. And we actually had another designer come in and bring us and enlighten us in, in sort of like a uh, an outsider point of view. And, and she really helped us sort of like eliminate things that just don't make sense for uh, trying to execute on in about three hours to show the users next day. And then also what brings the most value. Uh, so we actually zoomed in quickly, but it is so easy to get into weeds and think you can do everything, especially if you're looking at something like this that's end-to-end -end experience. So there were some point of points of struggle uh, there. So you can even like maybe even visually represent, see it like, okay, look at these, like there's, there's three really big intense stories here. We had to pick one and show it to the user so we could not do it all. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lesson uh, that that kind of come come to life, and that's what Miro kind of helps you. Like it's all, as Christina said, it stays as a permanent artifact. 
So you're able to actually point a point in time and, and point it into progress where you had a sort of discovery like, hey, we actually need to converge. So there's multiple points in conversion almost every day where we had to be like, okay, we need to zoom in now. Uh, even our prioritized day, that was the intent. Uh, we ended up, uh, we had about 13 of these boards in their bigger users, user epic, epics. And then they have a kind of sub stories in there. We actually brought the entire team because this is not just a design problem. This is all the stakeholders have a say and opinion about this. So we had everybody uh, dot vote, talk about this. It was, a, it was a very intense and great discussion to see everything, but then we had to converge on picking these, uh, these stories. And you can even see like why this is important, knowing the state of the camera and not being able to make mistakes is, is a huge thing when you have a, a hardware product and a big support team and all these, all these elements and why those, those two bubbled up at the top, but multiple conversion points and a lot of lessons learned. I don't know, Christina, did I, did I forget to mention anything else that you would add? Yeah, I would just say like, I think the biggest thing is like, know your stakeholders. And like, if you're having trouble converging on something, then like point blank ask them. Um, I, th I think for us, it was like getting, getting our stakeholders in the room and being like, so actually what is the most important thing that like we should go after and solve was really beneficial because otherwise I think we could have sat here and like spun and obviously we were trying to time box everything, but I think I think at that point, it's it's worth having the people who are gonna have a final say in the end come in earlier and give you like that perspective as soon as possible so that you can actually uh, run with it and make the most of the rest of your time um, instead of them like at the end questioning why you made the decision that you made, like bring them along in that decision-making process. When you all did it, did you use the decider role? And who played that and how did you use it if you did? Yeah, we had multiple people play that role, actually. I was just about to mention that that traditional design sprint uh, has this sort of like overarching decider role. We had sometimes our design director help, sometimes it was a fellow designer, sometimes it was a product director. So because we didn't have luxury to have any of these people follow us along uh, through all the processes, we had uh, multiple people identified at different points. Uh, that's all we could muster, but we would highly recommend somebody to that would actually be dedicated to that role. So great question, Ian. Yeah, I think what we, so when we, we sort of did these, we did these back to back and in the second one, we had a, a PM really come along for a lot more of the ride. Um, and he was like an amazing sort of person who played that decider role and sort of, and sort of was calling the shots in a, in a lot of ways that didn't necessarily make us feel like we couldn't go after the work that we wanted, but having someone sort of like with a business perspective in that decider role for us was, was really beneficial. So I think if you are going to have someone play that role, it's really helpful to have them be uh, sort of like someone who sits in a, in a product manager or a product director or a, like a business role who sort of is accountable for the solution in the end. Cool, any other questions around execution or uh, our lovely massive boards that we have here? If not, uh, we can go to our ex next uh, exercise. Uh, this is intended to make you imagine taking, taking one of the problems that you outlined in our previous uh, brainstorming exercise and just Think about very roughly, okay, now, now you decided to solve this problem. What would your Monday to Friday uh, look like? Uh, up here, we have the traditional design sprint, uh, five days sort of uh, divvied up, uh, but uh, it, it, they're usually taking a, a type of problem that could possibly work uh, into this sort of flow, but uh, if you could think about uh, what your specific thing you would like to tackle uh, could break down to, and then Christina and I are also going to participate uh, with some of our ideas as well. And just just take one of the calendars and put some sticky notes on there. Um, I think Christina is uh, adding some of these on there, so you can just take one of these and uh, uh, 
go to town and then we'll spend a few minutes on here. And then uh, if you have any questions, or if you get stuck, uh, we would love to give you some answers or, or talk about it. And if this is too hard to think about this morning, that's totally fine. Um, we can sort of talk about uh, what we came up with, uh, but uh, I, can, I can start first. Um, uh, we have a new product uh, that's changing a lot of paradigms of our existing camera. So our existing camera needs a permanent installation to work. Uh, there's a decent amount of demand and, and a lot of competitors moving in with these portable cameras that are they're able to be used on tripods anywhere you go outside inside. So uh, we really need to figure out what that user experience looks like. Uh, I think that problem would be perfect for sort of more traditional design sprint because at the end of the day, you would, you would have a full, like a solution would be uh, for a specific problem would be the final result. Um, one thing that Christina and I discovered is we would uh, work from the back. So we figure out what our Friday should be like and then see like how we could uh, uh, work backwards. So that's sort of how I uh, worked on this. Uh, field tests would be mandatory because it does include hardware. Uh, and, uh, and software and user interactions and some physical sort of elements there. So it'd be great if we could actually do that as our Friday. Uh, and then to get there, uh, we would have to just define a list of problems to solve to get there. I feel like, uh, I think map would be a similar way to, to sort of say that in a different way, but this is more specific. Uh, so it kind of helps, uh, helps you wrap your head around what your week could look like. Um, it would be important then if we sketch to actually sketch with uh, product managers and engineers. I feel like the the trifecta of uh, technology, design, and business is super important for this problem. And then Wednesday would basically basically be the same sort of. We would we would start converging here on what uh, what flows we want to prototype on Thursday, and then Thursday would be prototyping with uh, hardware and software and any sort of other service design elements. And then we would go field test on Friday. So that's kind of how I thought about breaking down this, this process. Yeah, so I thought about content. If anyone, I don't know if anyone is like a fan of, of content, but uh, my interest would be obviously like our, like I spoke about our troubleshooting content. So sort of like the, the errors we're serving to our customers and how we're gonna help them solve that, those errors. So I'd love to spend our first day diagnosing all those error types, uh, what triggers them um, and like essentially what's currently served to users, uh, brainstorm how we could better solve them um, or sort of the content we're giving them. Uh, prototype um, what those flows are like essentially what the what triggers those messages test them with users and then my Friday is actually implementing um, because content tends to be a lower lift so uh, if we could get something shipped within the week I would deem that uh, a super successful design sprint that's a lofty goal but um, you know shoot shoot for the moon right Who had this board? Is this uh, Jera? Yeah, so I work um, kind of an incubator. And so a lot of times we're working with the net new products and ideas and I play the, um, do a lot of the research. And so my favorite hack for design sprint um, is to do a research share back where myself or other people that have actually done the interviews kind of come in and they outline who our users are, the pain points, all of that kind of stuff to kind of get alignment on who are the users and then we can together define the problem to solve. So that's my favorite hack of all time. And then the other ones are just kind of reorganizing the day. Um, so you kind of sketch out your solutions the next day. Um, deciding like um, and storyboarding on the same day. Storyboarding, I think, really sets you up to just being able on Thursday to execute on that. You can kind of split up roles and responsibilities. And then um, uh, the last day, being able to test with your users. I really love uh, research sure back as a as sort of like a more uh, deliberate step. Uh, that's a that's a great great uh, uh, tool, um, Dara. Thanks for thanks for tidbit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anyone else? I don't want to call on you, Chris, but you have some really interesting stuff going on. Do you want to share with us, or 
If not, that's totally fine. If not, this is totally uh, meant for you to, to uh, break down your problems. So no need to share at all. Uh, let me get into the last part of the presentation, um, which is sort of what happened afterwards. So uh, as, as we were letting you know, we uh, did this back to back uh, on Friday of the first design sprint week we heard from a different business unit that they're gonna be taking over the project that was allotted for the second week. So all of a sudden we had a PM and a designer that are gonna be uh, working on this. And uh, the ask was, can we just do the sprint for you? And uh, Christina and I had to sort of figure out how do we graciously uh, push back on that idea, but then also let him uh, participate in this and actually work on us on this together. So we sort of had a design, like design business change uh, that happened in the in the last moment of this. So uh, wrench could could possibly be thrown in your process. So that's something to sort of think about. But uh, both PM and, and designer were fantastic, and they're able to provide us so much value. So our design next design sprint actually was was blown out of water because of because of those two guys joined. So it was it was a it was a fantastic uh, wrench that was thrown into into our planning. Um, and uh, it was it was a great exercise to sort of think about uh, think about things on the fly. So uh, let me talk about uh, uh, sort of what what we're going to cover here. Uh, learnings uh, is basically the first topic, and then what kind of impact uh, did our design sprint uh, have on everything else, and then all the housekeeping elements of, of our process. So let me uh, just cover uh, learnings here. So. Uh, Christina did a fun thing where she took a screenshot of us on the on the zoom camera and uh, um, you can kind of see the progress of, of exhaustion as, as we moved along and, and days were accumulating so I think this is towards the end of the first design sprint where we were just super tired. Um, we learned a lot uh, about ourselves about our product the problem. Uh, but let's let's kind of talk about like uh, learnings uh, about going after a design sprint. Um, and uh, hopefully there's some lessons here that you could just take take away and and uh, and it will help you sort of get there. Um, not everyone at your organization may know what a design sprint is, or they may have an opinion about it that you may not want them to have. And there's like an expectation that uh, they may be going in into this and then you're realizing, oh, like I, there's an expectation that they had and we didn't meet it because we didn't properly define it. Um, being super clear about what people should be expecting from you at the end of the week is important. Uh, we sort of had multiple goals at the end of the week, uh, one of them being an expectation of a pitch. So we would have a, like a regular sort of pitch document that would come out of a design sprint. Uh, while that really made sense with our second one because our problem was fairly clear and, and we had a, a powerhouse of a PM and other designer, it made sense. The first one, uh, the pitch actually came weeks later. So uh, we did not give ourselves ample amount of time to actually develop a pitch. So that's something to think about like what happens that last day and who is involved in deciding the value of it is really important. So we invited the whole team at noon um, on Friday and had them sort of went through all what we went through. And there's some some missed expectations or poorly defined expectations at the end. But you know we came out of it better better for it and it was just fine. But that's something to think about. Like people that you're inviting to 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 this journey need to know what to expect uh, from what you what you're doing. Um, also, not every design sprint will look the same. We're not the first ones to actually hack the, the design sprint book and, and use, use it for our own sort of purposes. So um, understanding that our first design sprint was a uh, discovery uh, type uh, actually, and then, uh, or more sort of like a research discovery level setting while the second one is actually more of a solution oriented and understanding the difference between those two is super important. So. If you adjust it, make sure you communicate that clearly. Uh, one thing that was kind of interesting, I feel like we learned what we we're doing as we we're doing it as well. So that's something that um, sometimes uh, doesn't let you uh, preemptively uh, decide. But I think next time when we do this, um, so um, we, we were going to look for that. 
Um, we did two design sprints back to back. As you saw those schedules a, a few slides back, it was very intense. Like I felt like I graduated something after two weeks of this, doing this every day. I, it felt if I had that kind of flashback of like, oh, I'm done with like this semester of college. It was, it was intense. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of sort of information exchange back and forth. So it could be very exhausting. Uh, if we were to do this again, we would have built in a break or a week off between them so we could use some of the learnings and summarizing for the one previously and then moving smoothly into the next one. Uh, this sort of back to back while it really sounded nice to stakeholders because they're like, oh, it's condensed. It's just two weeks. Uh, if you think about yourself a little bit more, you, you would probably uh, build in some time uh, as a break in there. So. Um, if, you, if you're uh, having your ask about it, uh, uh, consider that for sure. So a lot of planning goes into it and uh, breaks, are, breaks are healthy. Yeah, so to tell a little bit about the impact, uh, we look a little bit happier here. Uh, the, the impact was really good, but um, while we weren't able to get obviously all the resources we wanted, we still did get uh, buy-in from our stakeholders and felt like the barrier for doing a design sprint again in the future definitely decreased. Uh, there's like a better understanding of sort of the value of it and some of the output and just like better expectations of what can come from it. Um, we also like Huddle recently has leaned into this phrase learn by making. Um, and it's, it's really like a, a push towards fast iterative prototypes. So unlocking really specific feedback in real time from users. Um, so it wasn't necessarily perfect by any means. Some of our prototypes broke and we were like fixing them halfway through some of the tests. Like it was, it was quick, like, right. Some of that, that iteration has to be like that. It's not always going to be perfect, but um, having something to actually show our users was super helpful in the amount that we were able to learn. Um, it was like being able to test with some of our users, real life users was actually one of our stretch goals when we originally created the schedule. Um, but looking back, I can't really imagine not doing that part um, because that was the most rewarding part was getting really specific feedback on some of the solutions that we were creating. So if you do do a design sprint, I'd strongly urge you to include some sort of like prototyping and testing, whatever that looks like uh, for your organization or this type of solution that you're working on. Um, in terms of the team knowledge, nothing brings people together like showing them all the bad UX in your product. Uh, jokes aside though, seriously, having concrete examples of our experience where it's lacking uh, helped our team become a lot more aware of it and also start to feel some ownership for it. Um, I think it was kind of like an OGs moment for quite a few people. Um, with constantly conflicting priorities, we've had a tough time like getting UX fixes alone prioritized, but now that everyone knows about it, uh, we can more easily pull in stuff along with the other improvements that we're making. Uh, you never really know, like advocates can come from all different types of roles and you don't really know who they are until you empower people with enough, like enough knowledge and information to do something about it in their own work. Uh, so I think that was a massive impact from, from this design sprint for sure. We found advocates in places we didn't realize we had them, which is really cool. Um, and then also we thought we knew a lot about our product, uh, but it turns out that you can always know a whole lot more. Um, so really, no matter what, uh, you'll leave the week with more superpowers than you started. Um, I know it's a really quick week and you obviously learn quickly, but you're, you learn really deeply as well. Um, and a lot of it can be quality as long as you've structured it in a way that, that tends to be that way. So, uh, whether it's about the process, the product, your users, your organization internally, how you operate, or simply just the people you work with, um, you, you learn a whole lot. So it's a big impact there. Uh, and then sort of last thing that uh, we wanted to mention is housekeeping. Uh, so obviously you generated all these new artifacts now. You have all these design board sketches, prototypes, user interviews. What do you do with all that stuff? And how do you go about um, sort of organizing and actually making sense out of it? So um, yeah, like the, the, the weeks are over. We took, you know, break over Thanksgiving. We just needed to get get some rest, and then we came back and we're like, okay, what should be the first thing that we should do? Like, should we, where should we start? Should we, what should we do with all these things that that we generated? Um, so Christina and I did a retro 
uh, uh, the two of us sort of talked about what, what we liked, what we learned, uh, what we felt like lacked and what we longed for. And it was pretty clear sort of, in, in, and it, it became pretty clear that we needed, needed more people involved. We needed uh, uh, more sort of business side, metrics side uh, uh, team members there. So we learned a lot about sort of, if we were to do this again, this, this retro board is gonna become super relevant and we're gonna make sure that we cover all the things that, that we had. Um, that we had there. Um, and then our mirror board was super messy. So we did clean up later. I'm still cleaning up some sections actually. So there's still a little bit of work left on there and, and it's on my on my uh, notion board somewhere uh, to go back, uh, but it, it's totally fine. It doesn't have to be beautiful uh, and uh, it, it's okay to, to leave it messy. It, it, is, it is truly like a testament and, and snapshot of time. So that's important there. Um, and then uh, if you need to continue iterating or testing or measuring, uh, that that's absolutely is the outcome of this. So obviously the, the solution that you come up with at the end of the sprint is that you're not done. Like that is just sort of like your, your entry into uh, uh, solving this problem. So uh, to give you kind of a status update and the, the expectations for us for this. So out of this came out of several different user stories that uh, match our support. Uh, teams issues. So uh, we're going to actually, we have a lot of, as Christina said, a lot of uh, advocates to go back and, and, uh, and, uh, um, um, and, and, and we can actually go back and, and uh, take some of these user stories and turn them into, into actual uh, workable prototypes and then get them on board and getting prioritized. So all that backlog that we showed you, uh, all our stuff is going to end up being there. So, uh, or at least that's the expectation. So we can actually uh, gathered a team around these problems and and um, start actually solving them. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the the housekeeping. Have I forgotten anything, Christina? That's relevant to sort of say like as takeaways. Um, uh, we kind of want to do sort of a last uh, last little exercise. I know we're we're getting close to time uh, there. So uh, if you were to do this design sprint tomorrow, uh, what would you hope to learn from the process? And and what like now when we told you what we learned, like what would actually be your own uh, valuable takeaways from going through this? And uh, um, for, I mean, for me personally, it was like, okay, I actually survived two of these. Uh, knowing that, what would I do different so, uh, so they don't feel maybe as overwhelming or what would I do differently so uh, we can fill in some gaps of, of people helping us out that we had or stuff like that. Uh, it, was, it was really good to know and the next time you go into it, we're gonna, we're gonna get better, so. Um, five minutes or less time, depending on when people get tired of putting stickies up. Uh, but that would be great if you guys could answer this question for yourselves and us. I already love a lot of the stuff I'm seeing on here. It's like imperfection is okay. It's okay to move quickly. Um, leading people, um, feeling confident in sort of the work that you're doing, doing more of them, involving more people, feeling confident about the solution that you otherwise would have taken a really long time to get to. I think that's a cool thing about design sprints is they sort of like chip away at all of these things. Um, whether they're intentional or not, you come out of it uh, learning a ton about either how you work, uh, how you might be able to work in the future, or like you put your team in a position that maybe is uncomfortable, but in, in a way that um, accelerates growth uh, for yourself and for the team. Anybody does anyone else? want to? Oh, oh sorry. I, like, so I covered a lot of them, uh, but does anyone have anything specific they wanted to add? Have we convinced you that you should go ahead and do this? If not, don't tell us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're always here for some, some blunt feedback. Does anyone have, we, we only really have a couple things left and it's really, if anyone has any questions that we either didn't cover or things that um, you were hoping to get answered in this session that we maybe didn't answer, we would love to take any questions. Uh, my Zoom dropped out, so I apologize if you covered this, but one of the friction I get when um, doing design sprints is the idea of being able to prototype something in a day and, and do interviews the following day and then you can get this all done in, in five days. Um, did you, can you maybe, did you, you do that? Um, 
did you have any friction with doing that? Um, any thoughts on, on that part of the, the process? Yeah, for sure. I think it's really tough. Like what we realized was that the first time we tried to do it, we really struggled with it. Uh, to be totally honest with you, like the prototypes were not really well put together. Well, not that they weren't well put together. Like they, we, we could test with them, but they weren't something that we were super proud of or felt super confident in. And I think that was because of time for sure. Um, what we did the second time around was actually recruit other designers to help us prototype um, so that we could actually not just be working with like showing one prototype to users, but actually show like multiple um, that addressed the same problem and see if we could actually test different types of solutions. So my, I guess my suggestion for that would be like, see if you can recruit other people to get in there with you. So you aren't carrying that burden alone, especially as like, if you're the sole designer working the design sprint and you're trying to facilitate the whole thing um, and then prototype all of it, like that's just a ton of work on one person. So I bring in some other people. Um, I think another thing that really helped us was like, as like, it's okay if it's not high fidelity, um, like if it's enough to be able to test with and get learnings from, I think that's okay too. Uh, so quick and dirty is, is totally fine. And then um, maybe one other thing to consider is like, maybe your prototype isn't as robust and there's only like a few interactions, but is it enough to get the concept across where you can still sort of, sort of get learnings from get it? Learnings. Yeah. yeah. I don't know Z if you have anything to add on that. Yeah, I'm just sort of playing this this little recording of one of our prototypes here, but uh, all of them answered a very specific question. So it wasn't like we didn't prototype a whole app. We just basically attached a prototype to problem. And even knowing that they're not perfect, the stuff that we asked about and the, the uh, answers users gave us and, and feedback that they gave us was super relevant to know if this is even an option or what's exactly missing. So having a really zoomed in problem uh, helps you prototype and, and breaking apart uh, experiences and different sort of uh, problems also helped us out. But obviously we had um, uh, three, three designers working on these. So we're able to crank them out pretty quickly and kind of shared uh, different, we shared our assets and stuff like that. So we're able to move fairly quickly. Uh, so that was, that was definitely helpful. Um, and you kind of see like how it went from like sketches to prototypes, but highly, uh, once you add design power, power it's much easier. Uh, I was the only one uh, prototyping on the sort of the first day and, and uh, um, I sort of wish that we actually realized how limiting that is and, and uh, um, the stress would have been a lot less if I had more people helping out. But the second time you actually were able to get it uh, with design help, get some multiple ones done in a single day. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How about setting up the interviews? Did you um, try to play any strategies to get that set up, or did you not have much friction in setting those up in five days? In the first uh, first sort of uh, round, we actually only had one customer interview, and we relied on the internal team to help us out, especially people that are uh, more in customer support. Uh, I think if we would do this again, we would actually line up the real customers for that. So that was a quick learning there. And then what we were able to actually do uh, is interview five different customers uh, on the second design sprint. And then they actually gave us, like we actually wrapped discovery and solution in, in basically four days on our second one, which is also fairly intense, but we we're able to secure five people, gather their feedback and define their problem space and actually go back to this, the, the three of them and show them uh, prototypes. So one thing that was super helpful is uh, our, our sales team, uh, our account executive team, and our product manager that joined for the second one, he was able to actually secure all these user interviews for us on the fly. Um, they kind of came together more than anything. Like we had few scheduled and in, in upfront, but then like all of a sudden we, we had few and we had to readjust our schedule. So uh, we were triple booked some days and then sometimes 
uh, Christina had to be another one and I had to be on one. So we kind of tag team it, but flexibility and definitely sort of adjusting your schedule and moving activities up and down internally to uh, adjust for an external interview was sort of like they were our priority. So if you can get a coach or, or a club director on online, we would move all our activities around that and then focus on that and we can make up time uh, some other time. So a lot of flexibility there <laughs> for sure, but. Nice, thanks. Yeah, I would just add in like that we're in a really lucky position because we like are a company who has really close relationships with a lot of our coaches just because of the nature of a lot of their interactions with our products. Um, I can understand that like maybe if you work in e-commerce or something a little bit different, it's a lot harder to have like a pretty close relationship with some of your customers. But if you can, I would try and maybe reach out early um, and get a group of people that you know are committed or are very interested in giving feedback and sort of like rely on that group of people um, knowing that, um, like give them a heads up on like, hey, on this day, like I would love to schedule some time with you. Even if you aren't hundred percent sure of the time you have, maybe a general idea of like the week leading up to it that um, you'd like to get their feedback at some point and that might help you sort of if you can narrow in on a group of people who you know are, are pretty reliable help you make sure that you get uh, user feedback involved. Cool. Yeah, that's a great point, Christina. We sort of uh, are very lucky uh, that all our sales team members and account executives have very, very close relationships. They're basically friends with, with all our customers. So makes our jobs a lot easier for sure. Anything else, any other questions or thoughts uh, as we wrap up? Thank you for doing this. Thank you for coming. Thank you guys so much. Uh, before you guys head out, if you can pop down the very last part on the screen, we have a little section that you can give us feedback overall on the event. And we just kind of continue to take that to help make it better. Um, this is the little yellow box all the way at the bottom. And I'll do this here. Right there. All right. Yeah, so you can um, just kind of let us know what went well, what could be better, and what should come next. And then um, we have the Miro online community. So if you guys want to check out upcoming events, there's a link there. Um, next month, we have Jason Reynolds, who is a user experience leader, consultant, and he's an educator with General Assembly actually in Boston. And so he's going to be uh, doing our uh, a speaking engagement and activity next month on a topic to be announced. So uh, check out that event. And it looks like Huddle has an opening. Um, I Every person that I've talked to at Huddle has been amazing, super knowledgeable, awesome personality. So love the company, love the people. Definitely check out um, their company and that position. So thanks again, guys, for coming and for spending some time with us. This recording um, of this will be available. So if you weren't able to see all of it or you have a friend that you think would benefit from it, um, you can be on the lookout um, on LinkedIn for that to be posted. Awesome. Thank you both for the presentation. It was really awesome. I learned a lot and um, just appreciate you guys sharing. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks everyone for being here. If you have any questions about huddle, about the job, about design sprints, feel free to reach out to us. I'm gonna put my information um, in the ATX board space as well. So hopefully it's easier for everyone to access, but uh, yeah, please come to us with like, we'd love to help with anything um, you're thinking about or just generally connect. So thanks again for having us.